Thank you. 
Please uh, remain standing for the singing of our national anthem by DSU vocalist Kinsey Pickering. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars Please be seated. Good morning. I'm Jose Marie Griffiths, the president of this great Dakota State University. And it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to our fall 22 commencement ceremony. And this includes people who may be over in the plague house and those who are participating online. We are live streaming this event. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce some key individuals particip participating today. On the platform, we have to my right, Dr. David Kenley, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Doc well, we should stand. Dr. Pat Engelbretson, Dean of the Beacom College of Computer and Cyber Sciences. Dr. Doreen Bennett, Dean of the College of Business and Information Systems. Dr. David de Jong, the Dean of the College of Education. Dr. Mark Hawkes, Dean of Graduate Studies. And to my left, we have Dr. Rebecca Hoy, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs. Ms. Chantal Krebs, today's commencement speaker. Regent Tony Van Heisen, representing the South Dakota Board of Regents. Mr. Roland Samp, our honorary degree recipient. And Mr. Tom Nielsen, DSU's Associate Director of Alumni and External Engagement. You may sit down, thank you. <laughs> Our interpreter today is Julie Pallet from the South Dakota, Dakota Department of Human Services. And in the front row, we have Ms. Kathy Calise, DSU's Registrar, and Ms. Jennifer Meese, Program Assistant. I don't know if anybody ever told you, but Commencement Day is the best day of the academic year. It's the day we always look forward to. I mean, we love it when the students arrive, that's the second best day, but this is the best day. So first of all, graduates, I'd like to congratulate each of you who's graduating today. We're gathered here to celebrate your success in reaching this admirable milestone in your life and career, a Dakota State University degree. I've always loved the Isaac Newton quote, if I see further, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. And we're all standing on the shoulders of giants in this field house today. The giants who had the vision to establish this institution that is now named Dakota, Stone, Dakota State University, as well as those who all have sustained the university over the years. The giants of our families and friends who've made choices and provided loving support day by day through our lives and the giants of this Madison community, this state, and this country. So graduates, please stand, turn around, and take the opportunity and join me in thanking your family and friends for their contributions to your success.
It's now my pleasure to introduce our 2022 honorary degree recipient, Mr. Rollin H. Samp. Rollin, or Rolly as he is known to family and friends, has been bestowed the highest of honors by Dakota State University and the South Dakota Board of Regents. Rolly will be awarded an honorary doctorate of public service. And today he joins the ranks of other distinguished individuals who've been awarded this degree for their exemplary service to DSU and to the state of South Dakota. Like our legacy graduates, Rolly has family ties to DSU. His mother graduated from DSU when it was Eastern State Teachers College. His aunt, Ruth Haberger, was head of the Math and Science Department, and the Haberger, Haberger Science Center is named in her honor. But Raleigh's real contribution to DSU occurred in the early 1980s, when state officials were considering closing his parochial Christian school law, and finally, he pushed to end the 40-year ban on championship high school football playoffs. As a lawyer, Raleigh has left an impact on the state of South Dakota. He's credited with many influential changes to the laws that affect us all today. He authored the state's economic development tax incentive. He was responsible for the original drafting of homeschool legislation, as well as state administrative procedural amendments. He authored rural amb ambulance district laws and even local taps option legislation. <coughs> Excuse me. Raleigh has an established track record of championing tough cases, and he put his incredible tenacity to work defending those who needed his help the most as a chief tribal judge for the Flandreau Santee Sioux Tribe by authoring the Economic Development Tax Incentive or as a member of the Governor's Task Force on Trust Reform. Raleigh has fought for parity and respect for all South Dakotans. But I think one of my favorite Raleigh facts is that his history uh, is, he has a history with the National Football League. Raleigh was the risk manager for the NFL for 19 years, and in fact held that position during the 100th anniversary celebration and multiple NCAA Final Four tournaments. He has also volunteered with philanthropic causes, including youth basketball, Boy Scouts, 4-H, and projects that honor our veterans. He and his wife, also served as foster parents for over 70 young people. I could continue listing Mark Raleigh's many accomplishments, but that would take most of the morning. So without further ado, please help me thank a man who has ensured that all of our graduates receive a high quality education with a clear savviness in all things cyber, a man who has quietly helped to shape the South Dakota we have today, who has championed the voices of those who might not otherwise be heard. For these reasons, it is my great honor to bestow on Raleigh Samp an honorary doctorate of public service. Provost Hoy and Dean Hawks, please step forward for the hooding ceremony. Well. Sorry about that. Ladies and gentlemen, it was my great honor. Uh, Dr. Rolly Samp would like to say a few words. Thank you. Uh, please sit down. I'm uh, only going to be an interloper on your special day for a couple minutes. But I spent my life with words. Millions of words 
spoken and written, but I, I don't have a word for I feel today about this honor. I appreciate it. I more appreciate what's happened to the Dakota State University. Secondly, I'd be remiss without thanking people. I can tell you, you have the best college president in the United States. Uh, president Griffins took me to lunch in fall, and I pinned her a note afterwards said, you're the best thing that happened to South Dakota since I-90 and I-29. And I <laughs> and Chantal Krebs is one of the thought leaders in America. No, I don't mean just South Dakota, I mean America. She's everybody's Miss America forever. But her substantive work is without parallel. I also am pleased that Tony Valheisen is here today representing the border regions. He's one of the young leaders in South Dakota, soon to be sworn in as state representative. And I'm, I'm sure after today, we could count on him as a constant friend of Dakota State. I also want to thank the most important person in my life, my mother, my wife, Karen, who mothers me. Uh, all those things that President Griffin's talk, talked about, she's been involved in. And her whole family is here today, including my 90, seven-year-old aunt. My middle name is Javier. The president referred to my mother being an alumnus. Her speech teacher was Carl Munt. Okay. So you know how far our connection goes back. But the one person not here today is a person that finally adopted the dream of de developing the nation's finest computer university, Governor Bell Jankel. Once he agreed to a plan to keep this, to make this a computer university instead of a women's prison. Uh, things ch changed in a hurry. And I'll tell you, I'd much rather be uh, addressing you as graduates of the nation's leading computer school than part of a women's prison. <laughs> I, he would love to be here today. He would say, wow, a great day for Madison, South Dakota, and America. And as you go, go and 
share your expertise across the world. You have personally fulfilled Bill Jenkel's vision of, uh, for South Dakota, Dakota State University. Uh, in closing, I want to say that everybody that speaks at a graduation tries to leave some advice. Mine's going to be pretty short. I'm going to plagiarize the speech of a person that I heard in New York speak about 25 years ago. 700 corporate counsel were invited to a meeting at the Wall Street, at the Waldorf Astoria. We got there, the keynote speaker got up, I settled in for a long speech. He, he got up and said, the role of a corporate counsel is to be useful. And then he sat down. <laughs> I would ask you, where, wherever life takes you, use your God-given talents to be useful. Thank you for having me. And thank you for this honor. Thank you so much, Dr. Samp. You know, you're welcome here anytime. Um, students, graduates, you've met just meeting one of the giants of this institution, who, without whom we wouldn't be here today. This DSU would have been turned into a women's prison. Instead, it went to Springfield, and we got Dakota State University, which is great. It's now my pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, the Honorable Chantal Krebs. Chantal Krebs is a native of South Dakota who graduated from Dakota State University with a degree in business administration. She's been honored in the past as a distinguished alumna, and she's always been an advocate and friend of DSU. After graduation, Chantal entered a 10-year interval in public service. She held leadership positions in both the State House and the Senate, and she was appointed the Secretary of State in 2014. During her term as the South Dakota Secretary of State, she revolutionized the office with a service-oriented approach to business. Not only did she bring the highest number of voters to date, but she also gained back public trust through her openness and transparency. Upon leaving public service, Chantel transitioned to the private sector and founded the Avera Academy, introducing young minds to healthcare education. All of this while also volunteering for the Miss America organization. And eventually, her volunteer work with the Miss America organization led to her current role as CEO of the organization. And you may not know, but it is the largest scholarship organization for women in the United States, probably in the world, actually. Um, Chantal Krebs is a woman gifted with many talents and a servant's heart. Her advocacy for education and for the betterment of South Dakota is noteworthy. Please join me in welcoming Chantal Krebs to the podium as our commencement speaker. Well, good morning and thank you. What an honor to be here. It truly is. And after hearing uh, what our dear president has shared with uh, Raleigh and receiving that honorary degree, isn't it an honor to just be here? Think about that. And graduates, you're young. You may not know that state history, but I think a lot of us in the audience do know those names that Raleigh shared with us. Um, and I think that's an important that institutional knowledge. It's not always what you know. As Raleigh shared with us, it's who you know. And it's always the people behind the scenes that get things done. And I, I want to say a congratulations to Raleigh for receiving that much deserved honorary degree because Dakota State truly, truly would not be here. 
As our president said, it could have been a women's prison had it not been for Raleigh's idea, sharing it with the governor, a behind the scenes guy telling the governor, Governor Bill Janklow, that this is what this school needs to be and look at it today. And you as graduates are a recipient of this. So what a day, what an exciting time. Uh, you have your whole professional lives ahead of you and your possibilities are truly limit limitless. So when I talk to you graduates, I really wanna share some just basic things. You're the smart ones here today. You've learned this great and earned these great de degrees from Dakota State, but I think sometimes we all need to reflect on what has been told of us uh, when we, from somebody that's been older, has been wiser and shared some of those words of wisdom. So, you know, the old saying goes, boy, I wish I knew back then what I know now, right? And I think Raleigh is one of those people that we should listen to because sometimes it's a people, we all say that a lot later in life. We say, well, you know, we always wish we'd have known back then what we do now. So if your parents and your educator and your peers, if they've all done their jobs, then you really do know what's important. But now it's your job, graduates. It's your job to put that wisdom into practice. And I really mean that because it's you who's gonna make yourself successful. When I talk about success, it's just not in the goals of your career, but it's about yourself, your goals and your personal life in terms of those that you're gonna be around you and how people grade you and not just in terms of titles, but what you do in your life. So some of the things I'm gonna to share today, spoiler alert, it's probably things that you might have heard already. It's things that your educators, your parents, your peers, your friends, your aunts and uncles, the Raleigh Sam's of the world have shared with you. So I hope that I can just pass along a few of those. So let's, let's start with a basic question. Who's your favorite teacher? Anybody, come on, shout out, they're sitting in the front row. Who's your favorite teacher? All right, who else, anybody else? Okay, there we go. Well, mine was Dr. T. Garden. Everybody remember Dr. T. Garden? He always had a ruler in the front, too, and if you were talking, he'd snap on that ruler. By the way, Bonnie, my good friend, and I got stuck in the front row because we were talking too much in the back. But those are those memories of your life. You have great professors and teachers, but I feel that some of life's greatest teachers are not in the classroom, although DSU has the best professors in the classroom. But I want to reflect and think about those other teachers in our lives. So just think about that. For me, Billy Graham is actually one of my favorite teachers. Billy Graham is just not a theologist, a theologian, but he has so many sh shares with you lessons on life. And he has a famous speech, it was called The University of Life. I don't know if you've anybody who's heard it, but he had a famous speech called The University of Life. And he said in that speech, you can fail, but you can never drop out. So you can fail in life, and all of us, when I look around the room, how many times have we failed, right? But we can't drop out of life. Life is still gonna be before you and present you. So that's, that's what I want you to think about today, is that no matter what happens, your life's gonna go on, and a big part of it is really gonna depend on you and how you continue to learn life's lessons long after these days in the classroom. Classroom work's been long and hard, but now, really, the hard work begins. So with your permission, I'd like to expand on Billy Graham's thesis. So moving forward in life, your teachers are in, in the university of life. They may be, again, your professors, your educators, but now they're gonna become your work colleagues. They're gonna become your bosses, your neighbors, somebody like an honorary degree recipient, a Raleigh Sam, a President Griffiths, maybe even that woman that gave that presidential address, or excuse me, that, <laughs> that graduation speech, somebody like myself. And I don't have all the answers, but I just like to share with you some of my basic things in my life that I live by. And I share these quite a bit because they truly are, and I think a lot in the audience can relate. So my short version is you gotta get up early, every day. You have to work hard every day. You're gonna do the things that no one else wants to do. And I found that to be very effective in my life, is you have to step up and do the things that no one else wants to do. And that means every day. Mind your business, mind your own business. You don't have to be in everybody else's business. Mind your own business, just do your job every day. You go to bed, you say your prayers, and you get up and you do it all over again every day. That's the basic of life that I live by every day. You know, you're graduating from the best technology schools in the nation and in the, probably the world. So you have received the best degree, but really, you're gonna to have to start from scratch. Now you've graduated, but it truly starts from scratch at this moment. 
So I think some of the basic things in life too is the University of Life, the first rule, is that not everybody wins? How many of you can relate? I see a lot of head nods out there. Not everybody wins. And in today's society, everybody hands out the blue ribbon, right? Everybody gets a blue ribbon, everybody gets recognized. That's not true in life. So be thinking of that. How are you going to achieve that? And that doesn't mean a title or whatever it is, but how do you want to be seen in your university of life when you pass that along? I've been fortunate enough to win a lot of political races or elected offices, but I did it by highlighting my own abilities and not cutting down the other guy. Today, it's a very cutthroat, do whatever you can to get ahead in the world, but that doesn't mean you have to adopt those principles. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna be the person that rises above it and remains true to your heart and your principles that you've learned in life and hopefully your educators, your teachers, your parents have taught you? Don't cut someone else down. Rely on your own abilities to get there. So the basic rules is pulling your own weight every day at work. How many of you always say, oh gosh, I wish that other person would pull their weight, right? So be that person, pull your own weight so that your colleague doesn't say that about you. Meaning, I wish you or that other individual would pull their weight. Don't take credit for somebody else's work. And don't throw people under the bus to take the credit. Take responsibilities for your own actions. And that's hard. Sometimes you have to say, I'm sorry, or I was wrong. I've had to do that sometimes, and even most recently myself. I was wrong. Take responsibility for your own actions. Oh, I love this one, don't burn bridges. How many times we know somebody that's burned a bridge and then you go, whoa, that's, you know, and you're gonna need that person down the road. Surround yourself with good people. I always say a good leader surrounds herself with even better people. A good leader surrounds herself with even better people. Learn from your mistakes. And then last but not least, network. Networking, my favorite is also when you network, you're gonna be talking to people, but do a follow-up. How many of you have ever received a thank you note or a card or recognition from somebody after you met them? It's impressive, isn't it? My mom taught me at a very young age, write thank you notes. How many of you get handwritten thank you notes anymore? Handwritten thank you notes, do you guys, want, you know, I know we know what phones are, but a handwritten thank you note goes a long way. So when you're applying for that job and you're getting that job interview, send them a handwritten thank you note. You'll probably get hired for that reason. It's those kinds of little things in life that get you ahead. And get a seat at the table. I guarantee that Raleigh Samp, he had the seat at the table and then he made that impact in his life and with the governor. Oh, this one's hard too. Yeah, treat others with kindness and respect. And then sometimes your enemy today may be your friend tomorrow. So whether your career graduates is in writing code or developing cutting edge technology or running a business or being a teacher, you've already learned those hard skills to do those jobs. And that's all because of our great professors and teachers here at Dakota State University. But in today's professional world, it's the soft skills that are just important. So does anybody know what I mean when I talk about the difference between IQ and EQ? Anybody shout out? IQ, I got some head knobs, EQ. Yep, yep, right, emotional quotient. That emotional quotient is made up of those soft skills like even being able to communicate, have to write well, get along with others, manage people. That's that emotional quotient that you have to do in the University of Life. And you're gonna be leaders in your careers and that's the stuff that you're gonna rely on, not only those hard skills you learn, but the soft skills. So to be successful, you need both of them. And I, and I would suggest if you don't have a strong proficiency in skills in your emotional quotient, those soft skills, you'd better make it a priority. That is where you will help yourself in your careers. So how do you learn these lessons in the University of Life? I always say open your ears and eyes and watch and learn and listen from those around you. And that's those that are sitting right here at this table, in these seats, and in behind you. But then again, it's gonna be now your work colleagues, your bosses, and your neighbors, and your friends and family. You know, early in my career, I did spend a lot of time with some more of the senior folks in my life. I started volunteering at the local nursing home when I was in the third grade because my mom told me I had to. But I'm glad she did because it was one of those moments that I learned a lot from 98-year-old Annie Stephenson in the wheelchair. 
It's those men and women that are the University of Life that pass along those little tidbits that you draw on when you're 40 and 50 years old or even 20 and 30 now. And that's what I want you to do. So take that time is who is going to be your mentor in life? Who are you going to learn from? And trust me, successful people or anybody loves to share the chip, tips, right? They always want to share something and like, oh, you should try this or you should do this. So lean on and look, look to those people for advice because that advice is like an advanced degree in the University of Life. Lean on those people, learn from them, have them as mentors, ask them questions, go to them. I did that same thing when I, like I said, in the legislative careers uh, with Raleigh as legal counsel for the Miss America, I turned to him on a day-to-day -day basis with contractual issues. These are the questions that you have to ask. So I want you to find your mentors, and they're gonna change through life. So ask those tough questions. Well, and as long as I'm name dropping, I also like to drop that name. How many of you have been in that Beacom Institute of Technology building? Yeah. Well, Miles Beacom was one of those mentors for me. I met him through Dakota State University, of course, being on the DSU Foundation back in the, in the early 2000s, and here he becomes a friend and a colleague, and that's somebody I made sure I sat down and was, had a seat at the table with and learned from, and then I networked with him. And I wrote him thank you cards, and I asked him the difficult questions, like why did you do what you did, and how did you do what you did there? Those are the things that I want you to ask. My favorite question in the Secretary of State's office was, I don't want Sally in my office. Does anybody know what Sally is? Same as last year. But we did it this way because we've always done it that way. Sally was never accepted in my office. And for you, as technology graduates, you're going to be the innovators, so I hope we're not doing it the same as last year, correct? So think about that. Ask yourself, are we doing it the same way we've always done it, and why are we doing it that way, and can it be done better? That's those difficult questions, and I guarantee our president has had many of those questions asked of her, and she's been challenged with that. And she has to be forward-thinking to always be cutting edge in this university. So beyond all those hard skills you learn in the classroom and these soft skills that I talk about and I've shared with you, Truly live your life to the fullest because you've only got one of them, like Billy Graham says. So I have a challenge for all of our technology folks in this, in this room, because I have it sitting on my chair right there. We all have those phones, right? So I challenge all of you, and it sounds a little preachy, I know, but spend more time actually uh, doing things versus posting them. We post a lot. We want the likes. We want the followers. Doing them. Do them. Don't just post about it or talk about it or say that somebody else did it. Take ownership be the person to do it so that they post and say, oh, look what was created and done. So I want you to think about how are you contributing in that university of life. So as Reverend Graham so eloquently put it, in the university of life you can fail, but you can never drop out of life. So the last point I leave with you is be a teacher yourself. You are now in the world of the professional world. Be a teacher. More importantly, be a mentor. Go be a part of your community. Volunteer. Now that's a word we don't hear a lot, right? Volunteer. Um, support causes that may be important to you. Give to your university. That message was brought to, the DS, brought to you by the DSU Foundation, by the way. Give back to your university, whether it be $5, $25, $2,500, $25,000. Give back to causes, your university and beyond, that are important to you. It's hard to believe that 24 years ago I was sitting where you are and ready to make my mark in the world, but I did have a blast being a part of few firsts at Dakota State. Okay, you probably didn't know that. There was at one time, and the first time we ever had a rodeo club at Dakota State University, we had three members on our team, and I wasn't even a person that actually competed in the rodeo for Dakota State University, but we had formed a rodeo club. I don't think we have a rodeo club at this time, but that may come back. All right, we had a first time, we had a full marching band walking down and marching in our band. We pulled out the, in 1997, six, we pulled out the uh, uniforms from the 1960s, put them on, and yes, there's pictures, and we marched down in the homecoming parade because of Bob King. We had a marching band. Uh, we also had the first male cheerleaders on the boys' basketball team. I was a female, I was a, ba a ba men's basketball cheerleader, and we went to the NAI, NAI, NAIA Division II Championship in Stevensville, Texas. Four cheerleaders driving a car, and we had male cheerleaders for the first time uh, cheering right here at the field house. So some of those first were some fond memories for me at Dakota State that I don't know if they maintain or not, but guess what? 
Those things rotate in life. Just like life, it just happens, and then it may phase out, and then you try something new. So I hope that you can be a first. You know, I was just a small town farm girl from Arlington, 20 -some mile, 21 miles north of here. So truly, uh, I've been blessed because I've come from Main Street, South Dakota, so to speak, all the way to Wall Street yesterday, ringing the, the, the bell, the opening bell at NASDAQ yesterday morning in New York City. That's what can happen in life. I may have been a, a Miss South Dakota, a state representative, a senator, a secretary of state, CEO, and every other title in between, but guess what? I'm not done yet. But your possibilities are endless at this point, but you are the ones that are in control of your life. And it's not just your professional life and your professional careers, but everything you do in life. So what do you really want to accomplish? What do you want to leave for your mark in the world? So it's up to you. Congratulations, Dakota State Class of 2022. I hope you create your own University of Life. Thank you. Thank you, Chantel. Thank you for sharing your inspiring experience with our graduates and their families. And it's a small token oh, wow. of our um, sort of a, a memorial, um, a remembrance yes. uh, for what yes. we've done. Yes. Never know you. <laughs> yes, we do need our glasses. Otherwise, I don't know what would happen if they, they broke. <laughs> I'd be stuck up here. So I'm now pleased to introduce the musical selection, The Road Less Traveled under the direction of music director Kayla Nunnery.
I continue to be impressed by the wide range of talent of our DSU students, so thank you for sharing your gifts with all of us through the added delight of music. The heart of any university is the faculty. Dakota State University has an especially unique faculty, individuals who are experts in their chosen disciplines and who also have a commitment to and expertise in their specific subject areas. Our faculty walk side by side with our students every day, often indeed figuratively lifting the students up onto their shoulders so that they may see further ahead than others. We feel it's important to acknowledge all our faculty's contributions to today's graduates, so I now ask that our Dakota State University faculty stand so that we may acknowledge their contributions to today's graduates. Our commencement ceremony includes a member of the graduating class offering a few words on behalf of the graduates. The class of 2022 speaker is Janessa Palmieri. Janessa is a cyber operations major and a scholarship for service cyber Corps recipient. She is continuing her education at DSU and plans to graduate with a master's degree in cyber defense. This past year, she worked with Periton as a cyber defense intern supporting the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. Previously, Janessa worked part-time for the university in areas of penetration testing and education for computing and cybersecurity. Her positions were in the Deep Red Mad Lab as a student researcher and then as an outreach coordinator for the CybHer Institute. She volunteers to promote collegiate women in cybersecurity as the CybHer Club president. Janessa is also an active participant in the Computer Club. Janessa demonstrates leadership, commitment to teamwork, and strong communication skills through school, work, and extracurricular activities. Janessa? While you're coming up, I'm going to tell them we were all delighted this summer to see a, uh, a Facebook picture of uh, Janessa standing with the director of the U.S. Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Administration. They were so delighted to have her there that they have told us to send many, many more interns to that organization. And I'm sure we'll be doing that, but you've led the way, Janessa. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. My name is Janessa Palmieri, and I grew up in a city in New Hampshire less than an hour away from Boston. You're probably wondering how I found my way into South Dakota from a big city on the East Coast. It was not because I wanted to move to the med Midwest for a small town lifestyle like farming corn and soybeans or pheasant hunting. It was because of Dakota State University. In 2017, I was an incoming junior in high school when my mom sent me to a week-long camp here in South Dakota for DSU's Gen Cyber Camp. That camp changed my life. Just a few years later, I found myself teaching at the Gen Cyber Camps, inspiring middle and high schoolers' cybersecurity journeys where I once began my journey into the cybersecurity world when I was their age. There, I met Professor Andrew Kramer, who I didn't know at the time would end up teaching two of my classes, guiding me on research, being my supervisor on my first job on campus in the Deep Red Lab, and helping me score my first internship with a federal contractor. Tom Halverson, who gave me my first B in my degree. Th <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> taught me that it isn't about the grade, but it is about your effort, commitment, and learning that matters most. Dr. Ashley Paderatsky and Professor Conti Naraconda who taught me to know my worth, have supported me since freshman year, and are sending me to one of the largest cybersecurity conferences in the world in April. I never knew faculty members could also be my lifelong mentors and advocates. The faculty at DSU are unmatched compared to any other university. Here at DSU, you don't sit in a classroom with 300 to 400 students in a large auditorium 
where the professor lectures, gives standardized tests, and doesn't know your name. Every faculty member knows their students by name and strives for their success in and outside the classroom. DSU directly prepares you for the workforce with hands-on and project-based learning. An employer will hand you a project to do, not a standardized test. We can apply the hands-on knowledge we have gained from our DSU coursework to the projects and tasks of our actual jobs. This is what makes a DSU degree so valuable. Last month, I got a phone call from the Chief Operations Officer of a very prominent federal government agency. The first thing he told me was that I saw you went to Dakota State and I immediately picked up your resume. DSU is nationally recognized for its programs and I see it time and time again with the government and industry. My friend, who is also a DSU graduate, once told me that a CEO of a large tech company came up to him at a conference in Las Vegas and said, oh, you go to DSU? They are the breeding ground for cyber talent. DSU is a small school with a big impact, and the impact goes beyond what we just learned in the classroom. DSU allows its students to gain real-world experience. Cybersecurity and computer science majors can work and do research in the Madison Cyber Labs. Education majors can get a head start in their careers with student teaching for K-12 schools across the Midwest. Exercise science majors can intern in the athletic weight room or teach workout classes at the Madison Community Center. DSU fosters a community of students who can gain real world experience before graduation. Beyond gaining experience, students are involved. DSU has over 35 student run clubs. There is a club for every student and it is where I found some of my lifelong friends. As we begin that transition in our life from being in college to entering the workforce, never forget the experiences you have made and the memories you have made here at DSU. Cherish them forever. I'm happy to announce that I won't be parting from DSU just yet, and I will be completing my master's in cyber defense here. My advice is to never stop learning, love what you do, and be passionate about it. Congratulations, class of 2022, and go Trojans. Thank you, Janessa. You and your fellow graduates know that you will always have a place at home here. I've been thinking a lot about home recently, about what it means. And to me, home is the starting place of love, hopes, and dreams. The magic thing about home is it actually feels good to leave, but it feels even better to come back. Home is where love resides, memories are created, friends, are always, friends always belong, and laughter never ends. So may DSU always feel like a home to you, just as it has to me. Dakota State University degrees are authorized by the South Dakota Board of Regents, and we're pleased to have Regent Tony Van Heisen with us today to officially confer degrees on our graduating students. Regent Van Heisen, the faculty of Dakota State University have determined that the candidates before you have completed or will complete all requirements for the degrees identified. I am pleased to concur with the recommendation of the faculty, and I present these candidates to the Board of Regents for the awarding of degrees. Thank you, President Griffiths. Uh, I'll be brief today, but I do want to share uh, one thought with you. Uh, it's just about 100 years ago, 100 years ago next year, that Calvin Coolidge was sworn in as our 30th president. Not, uh, not one of the most famous uh, American presidents, but one we have a fondness here for in South Dakota because in 1927 he made Custer State Park his summer White House and, uh, and uh, in some ways kicked off the tourism industry in the state by bringing national attention to our Black Hills. But he was a man of few words, but he was someone who when he did speak, people listened because there was a lot of wisdom there. And I want to share something that President Coolidge said once. He said, nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. 
Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. I share that with you because it's through persistence and determination that you're here today. Uh, you have, sitting here, the talent and the genius and the skills and now the degrees that you need that are the entry ticket to get into the game, but it'll be hard work, persistence, and determination that get you to the finish line. And I just have to reflect as I stand here, it's a particular honor today to be seated where I was on the stage uh, between uh, two people I admire, uh, Chantel Krebs, who certainly uh, exemplifies the value of hard work. I saw that firsthand when I was across the hall from her in the state capitol for four years. And then, of course, Mr. Samp, you've heard, Dr. Samp, you've heard so much about him today, but someone who's been so significant in our state for uh, more than half a century. So I congratulate you on behalf of the South Dakota Board of Regents, and on their behalf, I authorize President Griffiths to confer upon each of you the appropriate degrees and diplomas to you, the winter graduating class of Dakota State University for 2022. Thank you. I now call upon several individuals to assist with the presentation of diplomas. Ms. Kathy Calise, Registrar, Ms. Jennifer Meese, Program Assistant, and our student marshals, Ben Bowman, Gage Shacker, and Tyler Thomas. A number of our remote online students and on-campus students are unable to attend this ceremony and are joining us by live cast. We will read all of the graduates' names, even if they're not here in the field house. So please hold your applause until after all the names have been read so we can move through in a reasonable time frame. I ask Ms. Jennifer Meese to please bring the graduates forward to receive their diplomas. Will the candidates for the graduate level degrees at Dakota State University please rise and come forward? In the College of Business and Information Systems, Doctor of Philosophy and in Information Systems, Girdar Reddy Boza. Damian Ricardo Mitchell, Haitham Momad Mohammed, in the Beacom College of Computer and Cyber Sciences, Master of Science in Computer Science, Tarek Talak Abdelmo Taleb, Kalani Alam. Stephen Carter, Anusha Chama, <laughs> Sushil Chowdhury. Thomas Jonathan Crockett, Craig Scott Jennings, Hope Elizabeth Johnson, Carson Kendall Grandy Cobal, Alexis Quizera, Charles J. Novak,
Daniel Michael Thomas Wolf in the Beacom College of Computer and Cyber Sciences, Master of Science in Cyber Defense, Samuel Todd Aiello, Fabian Boria, Lorenzo Joseph Galagos, Benjamin Glaser, Noah R. Going, Joshua Anthony Hamrick, Zach Hepler, Justin Komatsu, Alex Marwan Mansour, Joseph Ada Mokwa, Sherry Lynn Near, Viswanada Ravi, Madison M. Rhodes, Noah Drake Rusa, Parker Owen Hogue Seaman, Nathan Thomas Stopinski, Robert Williams, Joseph G. Winger, in the College of Business and Information Systems, Master of Science and Analytics, Seema Bandari, Sai Ganesh Rodi Boza, Casey Leroy Bray, Joseph Van Cranford, Kyle Downs, Indira Fuyal, Baritsima Reddy Gangula, Joseph Kanukaden, Porak Podell, in the College of Business and Information Systems, Master of Science in Health Informatics and Information Management, Christopher John Montero, in the College of Business and Information Systems, Master of Science in Information Systems, Muhani Balej Aruni, Serenavas Reddy Arakuti, Giridhar Reddy Boza, Visnu Vardhan Reddy Bukapali Gunana, Naga Funindra Reddy Chala, Shifa Chowdhury, Harsha Devanini, Arun Kumar Gatam, Venkat Ganga, Abraham Joseph Godwin, Kaushik Jula Kantla, Bradley Korn Kankowitz, Pavan Kumar Man Mamadala, Pradeep Chowdhury Mundra, Balaji Nagabodi, Sharat Kantuba Serinabas Nara, Jayasima Reddy Petamali, Harsha Samangi, Kalumet Sato, Yusuf Ali Sheikh, 
Holden James Surratt. Akumai Syed in the College of Education, Master of Science in Education and Educational Technology, Nicole Gabriel. Carmen M. Toole. Will the candidates for the baccalaureate level degrees rise and please come forward? Graduating in the College of Arts and Sciences, Venetia Maribel Blanco. <laughs> Leviticus Christopher Crow. Morgan Garber. Caleb Gebhard. Jacob Leo Hofer. Emma Lee Jones. Colton J. Larson. Matthew George Lenars. Edward Felix McGregor Magna Cum Laude. Christina Y. Mulu Summa Cum Laude. Jason Nevin. Jacob Roy Brost, Magna Cum Laude. Jacob Ross. Jonathan James Tallman. <laughs> Graduating from the Beacom College of Computer and Cyber Sciences, Elijah James Abbott. Caitlin a. Bedient, also graduating Associate of Science, cum laude. Krishna Burr Bista. <laughs> Taylor A. Blenner. Timothy David Borsma, summa cum laude. Kay Del Brost, summa cum laude. Clayton William Booth. Maurice Christensen, I'm sorry, Maurice Christen. Roman C. Cooley. Abdurrahim Alganja. Peter Louis Fods, Magna Cum Laude. Nicholas Daniel Hanberg, Magna Cum Laude. Christian Kali Hart. Jamee Heidelberger. Travis Allen Heidelberger. Zoe B. Hendricks, Benjamin Henschen, Magna Cum Laude, Joshua Robert Hofer, Cum Laude, Kayla Deman Hussein, Ishil Ikshik Mutlu, Ethan Mitchell Johannesson, Eric Stephen Johnson, Hunter James Cavanaugh. Amir N. Kamal, Magna Cum Laude. Austin King, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> William Kingston, Magna Cum Laude. Levi Charles Kittleston, Summa Cum Laude. Annabelle Klosterman, Summa Cum Laude. Annabelle! <laughs> Mariel Klosterman. Josh Crow, Summa Cum Laude. Jordan Taylor Cruz, summa cum laude. Alexis L. Calm. <laughs> Cody Matthew Edward Cusella. Tyler J. Larson. Matthew George Lenars, also graduating Mathematics Information Systems. Noah Allen Manter. Edward Felix McGregor, also graduating Mathematics Information Systems, Magna Cum Laude. Alex McNeil, Brandon J. Miles. 
Sharit Raj Misra, Magna Cum Laude. Taylor Myers, Magna Cum Laude. Elijah James Ness, Noah Ryland Osborne. Janessa Marie Palmieri, Magna Cum Laude. Brandon Scott Parrott, Cum Laude. Patrick David Paschke. Benjamin Patrick Pearson. Benjamin Prill, Cum Laude. River Quitzland, Cum Laude. Bibik Rye. Andrew K. Reese. Brent A. Rourke. Ryan Patrick Roper, Keith S. Garlotta, cum laude, Vanessa Ann Schroeder, Roya Lee Sham, Galen Forrest Shoup, cum laude, Evan S. Blomonsky, magna cum laude, Austin Taylor, Paul Stephen Turnblum, Skylar Walchek, Magna Cum Laude, Abigail Jean Witt, Carter Dean Winja, Magna Cum Laude, Jackson Cooper Zestera, Cum Laude. <laughs> Graduating from the College of Business and Information Systems, Kellen Wayne Banks, Magna Cum Laude, James Joseph Cutshaw, Janine G. Deschiel, Elizabeth Celeste Garrett, Michael Edwin Horner, Audra Hutchison, Zane John Jira, Chelsea A. Kirkley, Marie, Carrie Marie Kickland, Magna Cum Laude, McKenna Krantz, Catherine Josephine Leach, Jackson Dean O'Neill, cum laude. Zachary Brian Rohrbach, cum laude. Karen J. Schroeder. Max E. Sunny. Kyle Kennedy Van Fleet. Natalia Van Ormer, cum laude. Hannah Nicole V. Graduating from the College of Education, Jack William Anderson. Michaela Marie Boyd, cum laude. Leah Chan, cum laude. Christian Christensen. Nico Allen Ferroni. Jenna Lee Frank. Peyton J. Groff, summa cum laude. Jessica J. Henrik. Cooper Legend McDermott. Whitney Rose Owen. Taylor S. Stacy, summa cum laude. Bridget J. Thiel, summa cum laude. Mamie Elizabeth Turner. Kelly Winati. Elizabeth Marie Whiteside. Graduating interdisciplinary majors. Devon M. R. Berkness, Sr. Scott Day. Jesse Keith Dockin. Brooke Joanne Gortmaker. Sage Foster Hudson, Aaron Melissa King, Woo! Joshua Paul Snook, Gezaheen Tegane. Graduating associate level from the Co Beacom College of Computer and Cyber Sciences, Caitlin A. Bedient with honor, Haley Nicole Crawford with honor, Brandon M. Hatfield, Ian Larson. Kobe Michael Lee, Scott W. Lipitsky with honor, Carter William Merck, Bernard Thomas O'Neill III, Austin David Ritt, Lydia Rossetti with highest honor, Franklin Joseph Ryland, Sarah Del Rosario Vogela with high honor, graduating College of Business and Information Systems, George Justice Foster with highest honor. Caitlin M. Moore. Thomas S. Popal. Graduating interdisciplinary majors, Colby Lysinger.
Thank you. So, will all the graduates please rise? <clears throat> and by the, by the authority vested in me by the South Dakota Board of Regents, I hereby confer on each of you the degree to which you're entitled with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. Members of this fall 2022 graduating class, we celebrate your accomplishments. You may now move your tassels from your right to your left, and as you do so, I invite those in attendance to join me once again in applauding your success. can stay standing for a minute because there's one group present that we haven't yet recognized today, but would all the DSU alumni please stand and be recognized and give yourselves a round of applause. Go Trojans! You must be all around the room. It's now my pleasure to call upon Mr. Tom Nielsen, representing your Dakota State University Alumni Association. You may sit down. Uh, welcome, to today's, welcome to today's graduates as alumni of the university. Thank you. It's an honor to be here and celebrate with you. Uh, my name is Tom Nielsen. Uh, I'm a fellow DSU graduate and a proud Med Madison community member. It was just a short 18 years ago I was where you were, full of passion and pride and excited for what's to come. I can't believe what a world of difference those 18 years have, have made, not just for me, but for this great place we all get to call our alma mater. In that time, I've seen DSU grow and innovate. It has and continues to produce those distinctive, dynamic, and dedicated Trojans you see on this stage, in this community, and cert certainly sitting around you right now. You spent your years here hearing those words and what they mean to your decision to attend DSU. But now that you're here, you've walked across this stage, you've got your diplomas, and you're ready to go. So what's next? I invite you to consider what distinctive, dynamic, and dedicated mean beyond these doors as you continue to rise. You are distinctive. You have a degree and experience that no other university can offer. The potential you realize differentiates you from all, all the rest because you know this is just the beginning. You are dynamic. In this ever-changing landscape that is higher ed, not only to mention the unparalleled cha challenges you faced, you rose above it all. You continue to be innovators, the influencers, and inspirational leaders that will change the world. You are dedicated. Endless nights, countless trials, through it all you, you persevered. You chose to devote yourself to being all in while you were here. That dedication goes with you and every Trojan who walks these halls even if only virtually. On that same note, we are all in as you go. There are nearly 15,000 graduates in the Trojan community to support you, cheer you on, and help you rise. That's why dedicated is different than the other three. You're dedicated, but so are we. That's why we as the alumni wanted to ensure you, are, you received your first piece of DSU alumni memorabilia from us. As you leave today, let that serve as a reminder that we are all connected. What unites us, is what distinguishes us. We are all Trojans. While you, while you may not be in Madison forever, the Trojan community is always here. On every trail you blaze, your Trojan family welcomes you. As a fellow D D alumnus, and on behalf of the DSU alumni, I'm honored to congratulate you on this momentous accomplishment and officially welcome you to the Trojan alumni community. Congratulations.
Before we conclude, I'd also like to thank those who work behind the scenes to make this event happen. There are a lot of people standing over there and other people who aren't here today, they're standing in the back, who really um, have been working on uh, commencement for some time and it always comes off without a hitch. So thank you to all of you at the back there. And a special thank you to our interpreter, Julie Pallack, who's always given a chair, but she's the only person who never actually sits down during the commencement ceremony. So thank you, Julie. We love having you here. We appreciate you. I'd like to ask that we all take just a couple of moments to savor this occasion. Graduates, or should I say new alumni, this is a significant milestone in your lives and in the launching of your careers on various trajectories of success. We don't know where your paths will lead you as you leave Dakota State, but we do know they'll be wider and richer with greater success and experiences than had you never attended DSU. As you leave, I challenge you to take with you the knowledge and wisdom of those who've taught you. I challenge you to stay in touch with the people who've been significant to you during this time. Those relationships will shape your lives in ways you may not yet see or understand, but they are important and you will continue to need to nurture them, if only from a distance. But most of all, I challenge you to stay in touch with the person that you have become during your studies here at DSU. Don't forget who you are. You know who you are now. The world is a big, chaotic place. Just remember who you are. Friends and uh, families, on behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of Dakota State University, I thank you all for attending this commencement. I know we've got some people who've come from a very long way, and we're really glad to see you here in uh, Madison. So to conclude this commencement, I ask that the entire audience rise for the singing of the alma mater by the DSU choir. And after the singing, please remain in your seats until after the recessional. Thank you. Thank you. 